Hello all you do it yourselfers. Today we're going to go through putting pads and rotor on the rear of a 2008 Lamborghini Gallardo. Uh, in this case we're going to be using red EBC pads and the reason for this choice is these are supposed to dust up much much less than the stock pads. And then the rotor we're going to be putting on is a gyro disc. It's a direct replacement for the stock rotor. So it's 365 millimeters in diameter and uh, they're supposed to be pretty good. So we look forward to seeing how it performs. So I already have the car up on a jack, and in this case, there's a pickup point that's in the middle of the car in the back, so I can pick up the whole rear end. So we have it up just a few inches off the ground, and now I'll go ahead and pull off the wheel. I'm now going to prepare the caliper for removal. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and compress the pucks, and I'm going to do this by taking the pads and pushing them to the side. And it doesn't take a lot of pressure in order for the fluid to go back. So I'm just going to push on the ears, and you'll see them start to move. And then I can get a screwdriver behind here and apply some light pressure, and this will make the pucks move back in. And keep in mind that the pads are uh, a little fragile, so don't get carried away with this. Um, the pucks move really easy. Uh, I am pl applying pressure against the side of the rotor, but there again, it's a very light pressure. It's a light pressure, so nothing really to be concerned about. Um, and as I push this, of course, it's going to make fluid come out in the front reservoir. So I'll have you take a look at what we're doing there to uh, keep that from making a mess up in front. Okay. So up in the front of the car is where the brake reservoir is. Um, there's a cover that covers this, and then I've gone ahead and taken the top off. And to make sure that I don't overflow that, I'm just going to take an evacuation pump, and I'm just going to suck out what's coming up off the top. I feel like I'm a dentist. And then once you have it pulled down, um, just keep an eye on it as you're doing you know, any of the brakes, just to make sure that it doesn't overflow. If it does, it makes a bit of a mess. You end up having to take the front tub out in order to get underneath and clean it up. The next thing we're going to be doing is disconnecting the brake uh, pad wear sensor. And this is what the connector looks like that's attached to the brake pad itself. And so this is mounted inside a bracket. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take something and push against this tab to push this out. And be careful, they are brittle. Once this is pushed out, I'll be able to rotate that and take the whole assembly and pick it up. So let's take a look inside of what we're going to be working on here. So this is the connector here, and it's a little difficult to pull the connection from this side without it, because um, it'll interfere with the nut. So I'm going to be pushing from the back side to get the tab loose, twisting it, and then pulling it out. Now that I have the connectors pulled out of the bracket, I will just push on this tab at the top and pull apart, and that's how it comes apart. Time now to remove the pads. The first step is to pull these clips, and these clips are different on the back. The front does not have these, so if you use this video for looking at the fronts, there is a different procedure for this. Now that the clip's out of the way, I'm just gonna take a small punch and push the pins out of the way. And you'll see that they release pressure on the spring that's up here and then you just pull out the back and I'll pull the spring out set those down and then the pads just lift out just like this now that we have the pads out we're ready to pull the caliper and there's two bolts one here and one here 
that are 10 millimeter Allens. So we'll go ahead and break those loose. And then use something a little bit faster to get them out the rest of the way. And now that the caliper's loose, I have a box back here and I will just set it on the box to get it out of the way for now. So in order to pull off the rotor, we're going to need to pull off the front pad for the parking brake. So to do this, I'm going to go in and pull the clip that holds the you know, the one single shaft that um, pulls the, that holds the pads on. So so there's the clip, and then I'm going to use a small punch, and there's a hole in the very back. I'm sure there is. There we go. And then I'm just going to use a little small brass plug and pop that out so you can see the pin and there's a locking ring on that pin. We'll just pull that out. All right. And there is a spring clip that comes out and the angled portion of that spring clip goes in this upper uh, corner towards the inside. And then we will slide the pad out. And that will give us enough room to pull off the rotor. So go ahead and pull the bolt that holds the rotor on. And this is not torqued very uh, heavy at all, so not a lot needed. Now, the rotor's on here pretty tight right now because of the corrosion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a torch. I really am going to take a torch. <laughs> and, and I'm going to heat this up. So I'll heat this for a minute or so, just enough so that that center portion will start to expand. Okay, so I've heated this up for a minute or so, and you can see that there is some uh, expansion that's starting to happen around that. And so now, this will be relatively easy to, to pop off. And we pull the rotor out, and then also uh, we will pull out the back pad for the parking brake to get it out of the way. Now that we have the pads off of the parking brake, we want to go ahead and screw the puck back in. Now there's a special tool that you can get to do this. Um, I don't have that, so I'm just going to use a pair of pliers. Uh, this puck turns counter, or excuse me, clockwise, and you can see it just screws back inside. So very, very light pressure that it takes to do this. Now this is um, something that I wanted to show. Uh, the gyro disc is supposed to be direct fit. Now I've got the, the rotor sitting up here with two bolts just to keep it from falling out. Uh, the indexing hole, or the hole that should hold this on, um, is in the wrong spot. So I'm going to have to do something in order to make this fit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually drill another hole and tap into the uh, into the hub so that I have something that lines up with this rotor. Okay, so now that I've, I've made a center punch where the hole is supposed to be relative to the geodisc rotor, so now I'm just going to uh, drill a hole through and tap it. So we'll get the tap started. And this material is relatively easy to, to drill and tap. It's not uh, a super hard material. So once we get this going. Okay, so now that we have everything um, all cleaned up, we're ready to start the assembly. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this back pad for the parking brake and we're going to slide it in place and it'll just sit there. And then we'll grab the rotor, and I'm going to do a quick wipe down of the rotor just to make sure there's as the least amount of contamination on it as we can. So it's just a little bit of brake cleaner. I'll just wipe it down. All right, and then. Line it up with the correct hole here, which is down here. And then I'm going to take a couple lug nuts 
and put them in place just as a safety. Um, these are lug bolts, not lug nuts. So I have those in place. And then I will take the mounting screw and get it started. And this is torqued to 89 inch pounds. There we go. And now we can move on to putting the rest of the parking brake assembly together. We're now ready to put the pads back in the parking brake. So the inside pad was already put in place before we put the rotor on. So now we'll take the outbound pad and slide it up between the rotor and the caliper and push it up in place. And then just give it just a little bit of pressure against the caliper to keep it from sliding down. And then we'll take the, the uh, spring that keeps the pressure on the pads and keep in mind the arced part goes in the upward side on the inward pad. And then we'll slide it down and what I'm gonna do is slide the pin in to keep that in place as we push it through. And we wanna make sure that that hole in the pin is up so that when we go to put in that final clip that it is in place. So I'm gonna slide the spring down, make sure it's centered and then get the clip or the uh, pin to go through the spring and we wiggle it around a little bit make sure that it goes through and it doesn't feel like it is I stick my head in here and get a little look all right i think i got it that time and i'll wiggle that around make sure that the pads aligned and then keep, continue pushing it through the other pad and then i'll do the same thing I will get the spring down and I'll use a punch here just to give some pressure down on the spring to get it to go through. And once I have that through, it's a matter of getting everything to align and go through that pin. There, the hole in the back. And then once I have that, I'll take the punch and just give a gentle tap and make sure that the pin is seated. Then I'll grab the clip and put it in place. And then the last part of this is we want to make sure that the pads are seated properly against the rotor. And after compressing that puck, in order to push it out, all you do is ratchet this a few times. And that seats it against the, uh, the rotor and pulls it tight. We're now ready to put on the primary caliper. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is take the mounting bolts and just put a dot of Loctite on those. And I'll bring the caliper up. Line it with the rotor. And slide the bolts in place. And then get them aligned. Get torqued to 85 foot pounds. We're going to now slide the brake pads into place and keep in mind that if you push these, they will go all the way to the center of the hub, so uh, you want to stop not get too aggressive with how hard you put them in. They slide in. And then we will take one pin. Keep in mind that the, there is the hole for the clip that has to go in. And we'll slide that in place. And then we'll take the second pin and we'll start sliding it through. There again, making sure that the hole for the clip is is uh, in the right spot. And then we'll take the retaining spring, which I'm putting in backwards. Try this again. Yeah. 
and I'm applying quite a bit of pressure on it to keep it down. So I'll push pressure on the spring and then just give this a light tap from the back side. All right. And then if we've done everything correctly, that hole should be aligned right here in the top somewhere close so that I can get the clip in place. There it is. And I'll do the same with the one that's on the bottom. And now our brake pads are done. So the stock Lamborghini brake pads come with a brake pad wear sensor built in. Um, in this case, I've replaced the brake pads with an EBC brake, which does not come with an integrated wear sensor. So what I've done is I've purchased these. These are the Audi part. Um, it goes on an Audi R8. There's A5s, A4s. It goes on a lot of models. So um, I'll put the part number up there. And I'm going to try to install this with one handed as I'm working the camera here. So um, it's pretty simple. Uh, it's just a matter of lining up the connector, which I will do here, snapping it in. Waiting to hear that click. There we go. And then there's a slot in the connector. Put it down in the bracket. And this little tab, you just lift it a little bit and it recesses into a hole. And then take the end of the connector and, and this clip that you see, it's gonna go towards the uh, uh, outside part of the pad. So um, put it in, line it up here, right into that slot there. and push it in place so it looks like that so when it's all done you can see the clip is there in the pad and it'll follow that around and you can see the bracket so pretty simple install we're down to the final steps uh, i'm gonna put the uh, wheel back on and then once i lower the car off the jack um, i'll go ahead and torque the lug nuts down to 105 foot pounds and uh, we'll pretty much be done but the one last thing that you have to do with the brakes now that they're new is you have to go through a bedding process which means that you basically break the, the uh, pads into the rotor so each manufacturer of brake pads and rotors has a different way to do this so whatever pads you decide to use look up on their website and they'll be able to give you the details on what you have to do for the brake bedding so that's it I hope this is useful Thank you for tuning in.